We got Hosa to send us a 100 foot guitar cable to see how it would affect your guitar tone or if it would. They sent us not only one, they sent us two. So I don't know a ton about the technical aspects of what a long cable does to your tone or what a buffer does to your tone, but I do know that the longer the cable gets, the more like high end roll off you have. So it's like rolling off your tone up. Um, and I'm blaming this video entirely on Randy. If you don't know Randy, this is Randy over here. Uh, he contacted Hosa Technologies and got him to send us a 100 foot cable, like I mentioned. Um, but they sent us not one, but two 100 foot cables. So this is gonna be ridiculous. I mean, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a pretty drastic um, kind of difference on the roll off, but I, like we're gonna do some predictions what it's gonna sound like and um, kind of just go from there. Randy, what do you think is gonna happen? I was actually looking at guitar cables way back, like probably 15 years ago. I went to the guitar store. They said anything over like a 25 foot cable is probably not a good idea because yeah. you're gonna start getting that high end roll off, but they don't make them. So how are you supposed to test it? <laughs> So I think in a live situation, it would never matter like how long the cable is. It's just my guess that you might have a little bit of roll off, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's gonna be significant. Andrew. A Andrew knows the most about this kind of stuff. Right. I like to have a little bit of practical experience. Randy, he's probably around somewhere around the same as I am, but I, Andrew actually knows what he's talking about, so. Now I'm not an electrical engineer, yeah. so all this stuff I'll try and be speaking about it to the best of my knowledge, but I do know a little bit more about it. Um, there's a reason they don't make 100 foot cables. <laughs> um, and there's a reason they don't recommend them either. Usually 25 feet is about the cutoff and you go a little bit beyond that and you kind of start to enter trouble territory. Basically what happens, and we'll get to hear this live in action, but uh, every certain amount of distance you cover, so every foot or so, it, uh, you introduce something called capacitance. Mm -hmm. uh, and depending on the quality of the cable and what the manufacturer is trying to do, they will have a certain amount of capacitance that's introduced every foot. So the lower the capacitance, the less high-end roll-off, and just overall kind of like signal degradation you're gonna mm -hmm. get over time. So what that means is every foot, the capacitance builds up more and more and more and more until eventually all of your high-end is gone. So that is what is likely going to happen. Now, I have never heard a 100 foot cable before in my life. So I have no idea what it's going to sound like. The longest cable I've ever used is 35 feet. What we're going to do is um, go something like three foot cable, 10 foot, then we're going to do 100 foot, and then we're going to link the two 100 foot cables together with uh, just a, like a true bypass pedal, right? That's right. Correct. Yeah. And um, also what we're going to do is take all the playing examples and chop them right together like toward the end of the video. You can go here if you want to skip right to that so you can hear right rapid succession what a longer cable does to your tone. So let's go ahead and plug into our amp. Cool. Okay, so this is the amp we're going to be using for all of our tests. This Fender Frontman 10G... I'm just kidding. We're not going to be using this. That's just a joke. We're actually going to be using this amp instead. This is my Dr. Z Easy G50. Uh, it's just a standard nice tube amp. Uh, and we're gonna be running that through this Z-Best cabinet with two speakers. Uh, this is basically just a nice Fender amp. It's nothing too fancy. It's gonna sound pretty classic. You've probably heard it before. Uh, and we have it mic'd up with a bunch of different things. Uh, so we have a Shure SM58 right there. We have an SM57 right here. We have a Royer 101 right there. And then I think this is a Sennheiser 604 that we have on it as well. So whatever you're hearing is going to be coming through these microphones and this is the amp we're using. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm going to unplug this at home. Okay, here you go. Uh, okay. Something simple. That sounds really good behind me in this room, I'm just saying. Um, well, I guess that's it for um, the shorty. It's not quite for three feet. What is this, Andrew? Two feet? Uh, that looks maybe 14 inches. <laughs> uh, let's do a 10 foot cable now. So exact same thing. I'm just gonna move over there, take my chair. And I know I don't have to move. I can just coil the cable up, but it's more fun this way, so. Okay. Did I just move those mics? I did. I just moved the 57, could you put it back? Andrew, quick tutorial on how to adjust mics. Yep, you basically put the microphone in front of the speaker. You want to make sure that it's probably a couple inches off the grill cloth. That's the key. Uh, with a 57, there's kind of no wrong way to do it. We don't like it right in the center, but slightly off the center, straight on. I'm probably two inches back. Nice and easy. Perfect. All right, 10 foot cable. Crap. <laughs> Thank you.
I don't notice a difference in the room. I don't expect to though with a 10 foot cable, so. Do you guys want to do a 25 as well? Let's do the 25. Okay. Cool. There's a chair already there though. I want the same chair. Part of the tone. The tone runs through the body. The chair is the chair is part of the tone. Fingers, guitar, chair, cable. Have you ever heard my theory on strap locks? I don't know if it's because I'm over here and this is a studio and it's deadening everything. I don't know. Hundred foot cable. Um, try to stand by so I don't. Make nasty noises. Yeah. What is it measured? Hard to do the amp if you didn't hear anything. Um, the amp's on standby. I'm trying to stand by, so I don't. I did it again. <laughs> oh, hello. Here we are, 100 feet away, at least 100 feet away from the amp. Jimmy and Jimmy watching over me. Let's see what it sounds like. I could barely hear it coming through the studio doors. That's because the doors are open, but here you go. Oh, I'm not tuning in. so I can relay it, it's a true, true bypass level, and then just head upstairs as far away from the amp as I can get at 200 feet. Meet again. 200 feet of cable, man. 200 feet of cable, the only other time I can think of anybody coming close to this live is I saw Buddy Guy in uh, 2000 at the Arena Theater in Houston, and he was he had a cable that went all the way outside to the foyer, the foyer, whatever. And his tone sounded great, it didn't sound changed at all. It was really bright, he had, you know, really bright buddy guy strap tone, so. Interesting, yeah. So it's the same type of thing, hey? You just notice like more and more of that top end roll up is definitely happening. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's not, we're not really getting a lot of like volume drop. No. I think it just sounds like it's maybe getting thinner, but it's hard to tell, I think, because there's so much low end that still is there. There's tons of low end still. Yeah. Yeah. And there's definitely high and missing, but yeah. yeah. Would you notice? I don't know. Okay, so we have one more little part to this experiment for you, um, and that's going to be introducing a buffered pedal into the line to help right. kind of negate some of that high end roll. I have no idea what it sounded like or how drastic it was, but uh, this would be a good little experiment. Andrew knows a lot more about buffered pedals and what it does than I do, so I'm just gonna defer to you. Like, can you explain what sure. it is? Yeah. yeah, so basically a lot of pedals are true bypass, but uh, some pedals have a buffer when they are bypassed. So when they're turned off, they have a buffer. What a buffer does is it's basically a unity gain amplifier. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna take that high end that gets rolled off and it's gonna try and reintroduce it. Now, over 200 feet of cable or 100 feet of cable, you'd probably want to have a buffer, 10 buffers maybe in there. You'd want a lot of buffers, right? That would be the idea to keep the signal alive all the way through. Yeah. We're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to run 100 feet. We're going to use this, which this has a buffer when it's bypassed this pedal. And then we're going to do another 100 feet. And we're going to see if that does make a difference because the other thing we were using was true bypass. All right, so Archer, make sure that some power and put and output, input, output, should be good to go. Make sure it's off. I mean, that's significantly brighter. Yeah. It's not like the 10 foot cord. No, it almost sounds like we lost some low end. But I don't know if it's, it's if just. It, yeah, it's because different on the curve, right? Yeah. I'm not sure. So we're gonna go through the results right now, let you hear them back to back to back to back, and then we'll come back and talk about it.
All right, that is, um, it's kind of what I expected, but it was weird not being able to hear it right. through the amp at the time. So coming back and listening to it on the computer, to me, it was like, I think it was more drastic than I was expecting. Not by much, but a little bit. It was especially, I don't know, when you jump from between like the really tiny cable and the 200 foot, I was like, whoa, that sounds like garbage. Yeah, when you when you hear them going progressively, I don't think you notice as big of a difference one after the other. Uh, and in the room, we noticed a difference, uh, Randy and I did, but it wasn't drastic. And we kind of figured, you know what? With a buffer, the 200 foot cables, you could probably get away with it at a gig. Yeah. But as soon as we listened to the recordings, to me, I know it's like, that is a massive difference, yeah. massive. What do you think, Randy? Yeah, I think if you're like you too, yeah. and you're playing all your cleans with your echoes and stuff, yeah. right? A 200 foot with no buffer is probably a no go. Yeah. If you're playing in like a doom fuzz band, <laughs> I think you're good. It might be nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I would like I don't know why I would ever have a reason to do this, but like a like actual good buffer pedal was made specifically for that, and a 100 foot cable is like okay. Yeah. 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 I feel I feel like you could get away with it. I feel like. Uh, especially when we got into maybe the 30 foot cable or 25 or 30, whatever, whatever that was. Whatever that, um, that cable to me, it, it kind of sounded like the sweet spot almost. It kind of rolled off enough of the sparkle that I was okay with it. Um, it's hard to say for sure though. I liked the shorter cables. I think it's as simple I, as that. I liked the second and third cables we did those. So the 10 okay. and 20 or 35, 30, well, however long the second, yeah. third one was. Yeah. If I was going to be recording, yeah. I'd be using a 10 foot or shorter cable. Yeah. That that makes me feel better because oftentimes I'll show up to a cherry skate or something and I'll have a 10 foot cable and just be like, yeah. I'm not moving around anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think, I think basically like what my main takeaway from this was is use the shortest cable you possibly can get away with. I would say. And if, if you're plugging into an amp and you're playing through like some, a really dark sounding guitar like a Les Paul or something, you're like, man, the treble just isn't here. What kind of cable are you using? Right? Yeah, it's a, it's a good place to look. And I mean, even vice versa, you, you're playing a Strat, you're playing something really, yeah. really bright. Go for a longer cable, maybe. Because uh, the thing is, is when you roll off certain frequencies on your amplifier or on your guitar, it's cutting at a certain frequency. And it might be different than the frequency That's that yeah, the cable is going to be attenuating, right? So kind of experiment. If you find your guitar's bright, try a longer cable. See if that does what you're kind of are looking for. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. See you guys.